dear students of Holy Cross Lake View, once again, I welcome you for this lesson of history, online teaching during this season of COVID pandemic, that we cannot have an interface with you in our classroom situations. But the strong team of teachers at Holy Cross Lake View, given with the support of our dedicated administrators, they thought it wise to come up with this online teaching so that you can be able to see us discussing with you, attending to you throughout this season, which is worrying all the Ugandans. I welcome you so much for this lesson of history. The other time we are looking at the origins of Uganda Kingdom, where we saw it the various theories that were responsible for Uganda's existence. If we are in a classroom situation, or if I had the chances of reaching you, I'll begin by asking you, by show of hands, that how was Uganda Kingdom established so that it can give me confidence whether you surely understood that subtopic very well. Since I'm not nearer to you, but I can reach you through this technology, I'll respond by saying that Uganda Kingdom, its origin is not clear. And that's why we base on the theory Z. We cited the theory of Chintu and the theory of Katochimela. Today I would like to introduce to you the factors that were responsible for Uganda's rise and expansion. This question was part B, UNEB 2012. It came as part B, UNEB 2013. It was brought back in UNEB 2016 as part A. When they ask you about the factors for the growth and expansion of Uganda, if it is part A, you go back to what I told you. Stick to the introduction. First, introduce the topic. If it is part A, introduce it first. Where was Uganda? How did Uganda come into existence? Cite the location of Uganda. If it is part B, don't introduce, but you labor to conclude, because the conclusion will earn you one mark. So our interest today is on the factors that led to the growth and expansion of Uganda. Remember I told you in the origin that Uganda started as a small nucleus, covering Busiro, Maokota, and Chaddon. Because Uganda was small in size, it was easy to administer. It could easily be defended and administered effectively. Than any area which is very big. Not only that, Buganda Kingdom was also gifted with the fertile soils. Remember all areas that are surrounded by water bodies do possess fertile soils. And because Uganda possessed fertile soils, on top of that, it had favorable climate. This enabled the Baganda, who were hardworking, to produce enough food to feed the growing population in Uganda. It was a factor that was responsible for the rise, growth, and expansion of Uganda Kingdom. Not only that, I told you that Uganda brought areas of Ubuntu, Kochi under her control. And the essence was, Uganda 
wanted those areas of Kochi because Kochi had men who were skillful in producing baka cloth. Buganda brought areas of Wudu, as I told you, areas of Gomba, areas of Wekula. Why did Buganda go for those areas? Kochi had iron, or it was rich in iron. Here, what I mean is that Buganda brought areas of wood that had baka cloth, coach with iron, for Buganda to participate in trade with the Arabs at the coast. And now that Buganda participated in trade with the coast of Arabs, Buganda managed to obtain guns from the Arabs. When Buganda got those guns, those guns strengthened the defense of Uganda Kingdom because the stronger leaders we mentioned the other time, Mawanda, Chiavaku, Katalik, disputed those guns obtained from the Arabs to the stronger army of Uganda. And what made the Uganda army strong were those guns acquired. And on top of the guns, the Baganda also made iron tools, which doubled as tools for agriculture and tools for defense. So trade formed a strong economy of Buganda Kingdom and it helped Buganda to grow and also to expand. When you look at Buganda Kingdom, it also possessed well-developed roads that connected the kingdom to most parts. As it connected the kingdom to most of the other parts, it eased the movement of people and goods. This was also a fact enough towards the rise and the expansion of Uganda Kingdom. Buganda had a centralized system of administration, and this ensured stability in kingdom, whereby it had the king at the top, who had powers to appoint and to dismiss chiefs. Below the king, there was the Prime Minister, Katikiro, and some other chiefs, like Chief Justice, not only Chief Justice, the Treasurer. This one helped the Uganda Kingdom to rise and to expand. Buganda possessed strong and capable leaders. And when you mention that strong and capable leaders, don't forget to give the examples because once you don't state the examples of such strong leaders, we shall give you a half a mark. So you mentioned the strong leaders, Suna, Kabaka Juju, Kabaka Sikamanya, Kabaka Mawanda, Kabaka Katerega, Kabaka Mutesa One. I told you in our previous lesson that don't cite Kabaka Mwanga as one of those strong leaders, given the fact that he was responsible for the occurrence of the religious wars. Then we see to it that even in the Uganda Kingdom, the Kabaka married from all the major clans, not tribes. Kabaka married from the major clans of Uganda. That created unity and loyalty, respect. The people in Uganda or the Uganda respected so so much the Kabaka it created or it inculcated the spirit of oneness and togetherness given the fact that the Kabaka had married from those major clans and it promoted the hard work among the Baganda. Not only that, Buganda also exploited the, the advantage of having weak neighbors, for example, Busoga. These neighbors that were weak were not a threat to Uganda's existence. And this helped the Uganda Kingdom to raise and expand. Remember, Bunyolo had declined. Yet Uganda was at first a vassal state to Bunyolo. And when, you, when Bunyolo declined, Uganda emerged independent. Then you see to it that Bunyolo as it declined, other remaining kingdoms 
that we are neighboring Buganda, case in point, Busoga, we are so weak and could not pose any threat to Uganda Kingdom or Uganda's existence. This helped Uganda Kingdom to rise and to expand. In Uganda, another point which you should note is that there was division of labor. By this I mean that work was divided. As women concentrated on farming and looking after children, men went for outside activities from their home. The men did fishing, went for trading, fighting, looking after their animals, hunting. The vision of labor enabled the Uganda Kingdom to rise and expand. One should not forget the point of strategic location of Uganda Kingdom. In our preamble, as we are introducing this topic of Uganda, we say that it was one of the interlacustrine kingdoms, areas that were surrounded by water bodies. And because Uganda was surrounded by water bodies, Lake Victoria, Lake Joga, we can say that it was an advantage to Uganda Kingdom. This was a physical or a natural barrier that protected Uganda from its enemies. The enemies to Uganda could not easily attack a Uganda Kingdom because of that natural defense barrier of Lake Victoria. Uganda also was able to grow, to develop, because Uganda possessed royal bodyguards. The guards were the Abambuwa, the royal guards. They guarded the palace, they also guarded the, the king. This enabled the Uganda Kingdom to develop, to expand to its climax. One should not forget the point of Uganda possessing a strong army. There was a difference between the loyal bodyguards and the strong standing army. Army men were equipped with the guns Uganda obtained from the Arabs during her external trade. The guards possessed the spears, the shields, and these were strong Uganda men who were dedicated to protect the palace and also to protect the king. This did not go through military training like the army men and these bodyguards had, provide, had been provided to the king by the chiefs of various areas because different chiefs of different areas used to send able-bodied men to the king. And this beefed up the army of Uganda Kingdom. One should also not forget the fact that Buganda participated in the local trade with neighbors and also in local trade or interstate trade as they exchanged goods with neighbors like Kalawi. This helped Uganda Kingdom to rise and also to expand. The people within the Uganda Kingdom were hardworking. They were able to produce enough food to feed the growing population in Uganda. Those who were surrounded by water bodies managed to practice fishing and also at the same time 
did cultivation. So from the gardens, they availed themselves with the food. The gift of the water source provided them with the fish. And these were the factors that helped Uganda Kingdom to rise and also to expand. I thank you very much for having listened to me in this topic of the Uganda Kingdom and the subtopic of the factors that led to the rise and growth of Uganda Kingdom. We shall keep in touch next time, but uh, as any humble appeal to you that you should read, don't be like other students from schools that are not religious founded. Remember, we are a Christian founded school, a Catholic founded school, and we have values that we cherish. We believe that wherever you are, you serve as a good example. And you are marketing our school very well. So don't be village dwellers or city weeds to be found everywhere. Sit down, be unique from other students. Do the work the way we are sending it to you. Concentrate. Because by the time we go back to school after this pandemic, we shall have a series of tests from the work we keep on sending to you. So please be well behaved and disciplined. Sit down and read. The only business you have right now is reading your books, as well as helping your parents in doing the house call. Thank you so much. God bless you. We shall meet next time when we can't avoid. Goodbye.